Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to step away from guns and talk about gear, specifically bino harnesses. I'll pop pictures up as I talk about some of these things if it's relevant. Recently I had done a video on the recon chest harness, bino pack, whatever you want to call it, from Eberly Stock. It was a great product. Got it in gray, had rangefinder pouch, had an accessory pouch, and then had the dangler pouch underneath it. I did a long hike in Colorado in August with that. And while form and function were just absolutely wonderful, I felt like it was lacking a little bit. And not because of like space. The space was wonderful. Uh, the construction was great and all that. But for me, you know, I'm, I'm turning 50 next year and I want to go lighter weight, better, higher quality gear, all that good stuff. And while the Eberly stock was a good product and it was made really well, I felt like the analogy in my mind was like, so when I was in the army, uh, I started in 1997 and we had Alice packs, I'll throw some picks up. And they were relatively lightweight, you could put a whole bunch of junk in them, you know, not too heavy just as a pack. And in true military fashion, when it was time to get new gear, they gave us a bigger pack. What do you do? In hunters, you're like this as well. And guys that have gear everywhere, like all this stuff, we're like this. If you have more space, you're going to fill it, which means it gets heavier. And you have stuff that you would like to have and that's nice to have that you don't necessarily need. You know, we get bigger, we get heavier, it slows us down, it makes us less effective. Um, in combat, that's a bad thing. In hunting, that's a bad thing. I think those are very comparable things. I wanted to kind of backtrack a little bit and say that I like lightweight stuff, but I like good lightweight stuff. My pack, not a lightweight pack. Um, I have the Sawtooth 45. It weighs a lot. There's packs out there that weigh less that may be better. So I got that. It's a little small. I need a bigger one. I carry more stuff. It's going to be more heavy. But I digress back to the bino harness. When I decided to get rid of the bino harness, I went ahead and bought the one that I should have bought in the first place, the one that I actually wanted. And it was the Stone Glacier Vinyl Harness. This thing is crazy light. So I'm going to bring you over to the workbench. I'm going to weigh it, show you its features and all that good stuff and why I like it. Um, I have not taken this on a hunt. I'm not taking it anywhere. I went on a day hike with it with uh, my pack on. This thing is light. I like this. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Recon Chest Harness was like 14 ounces, 13.8 or something like that. But... I'm going to show you the way to this one and I'll show you how to put this together. So right here we've got the bino harness and then inside is the is the actual harness that attaches to your body. There are no other accessories on this thing. And so we're going to pop that on there. I'm going to scoot it down a little bit so you can actually see the weight. It is 9.5 ounces. So not bad at all. Um, we're going to add to that weight, but we're already well below what the recon harness was. And with the form and function of this one, um, you know, I'm not lacking anything. It's still got accessories that I can hang off of this. This is the main harness, and this is the regular size medium. This fits like your 8x40s, 10x40s, things like that. It can fit like 10x50s, I think, too. But once you start getting up to 12 and 15 power binoculars, the, the size of them really does increase. Um, one thing I added to it was the rangefinder pouch. It's built pretty much exactly the same way, except it's got some Velcro on the back. We'll show you, show you how to install that in a little bit here. Um, some of the features here, the lid is non-magnetic. It's all on a bungee system. One of the things that's important about that, even with, with having a magnet in there, um, it can mess with a compass. Well, a lot of people don't use mapping, mapping compass anymore. They use their cell phones with you know Onyx and things like that. That's what I use. And I thought I was good. No big deal. Then I started reading about it more. The magnet can still mess with what your cell phone does with the navigation. And I've actually experienced that a few times and I didn't know what to attribute it to. But that has to be it. I'm looking forward to getting up in the high country with this and not having interference and not having to hold my phone at arm's length just so I can get the, get the mapping feature to work. So, so you want to pull all that out. One of the things I did already had this set up, so I partially took it apart to show you guys. But... One of the things I like here, um, it comes with these rubber bands, I'll just, uh, strap keepers. They're pretty stout. Over time, those are going to dry rot probably. Um, I like to tape my stuff. One of the things we did in the military, no straps, no flash, and no, no clicks or ticks or noise of any kind. Everything I do with gear has to be quiet, has to be silent, and has to be streamlined. 
Um, one of the things that I like about this, and I'll take this strap out of here to show you, these pressure lock buckles, I guess they're buckles, it's just a pressure. And so you can move them in and out. As you can see, once it's on there for a long time, it's gonna leave a mark on your on your strap, but it's not that big of a deal because once you find something, um, you're gonna leave it for a long time. I hunt predominantly when it's warm, but even when it's cold, I find that when I'm wearing a jacket, all I would have to do is loosen the side buckles and these top buckles stay about the same. So I'll end up taping these down. Uh, the other thing they've got here that you have to add, it's a split buckle. As you can see here, there's a split here and a split there. This is the lanyard to attach to your accessory. So this one was for my binocular. Um, the one on the other side would be for my rangefinder. I've not found a place where I'm comfortable with these just yet. I think it's going to be at pie. So when they're in the pouch, the strap is down and not hanging out like this one. If it's attached, then it's got a big loop hanging out here. So I think I want to move this buckle up higher. But that's that's a personal preference. It's not really a product flaw or anything. It's just a feature I can move that. The setup on this is super easy. You're going to flip it over. You're going to adjust your straps as needed. And you're going to buckle it. It's not very hard. Um, the back piece is really nice. It's really flat. Feels great. Super strong material. Really nice. I love their logo. It's awesome. So that's all you do. Bring your binoculars out. I've got an Athlon Argos 10x42. And these are Diamondback 8x42. I'm going to pop up the size chart that you determine how to adjust this. So in determining which uh, or how to ad properly adjust this bino harness, we need to know the length of the, the binoculars. And so what you're going to do, you're going to take any of the binocular that you're going to use. You're going to extend the eye cups all the way out. You're going to get you a trusty handy dandy tape measure and you're going to measure this. And so we are at five and five eighths for the Athlon and exactly six for the Vortex. And so we're going to go over to the trusty chart that you can get on the Stone Glacier website. We've got 5.75 as a measurement, as you can see on the chart here, and then 6. Um, the Athlon is a little bit beyond 5.75. So I think what we're going to do, we'll go for the 6. We'll, we'll do the Vortex. Well, if they're 6 inches long, the front hood height should be 0.5 inches. So you're going to measure up from the bottom here to here. And so we're at approximately, we're a hair off, but I'm gonna leave that, so we're at half an inch. Imagine that, it already fits. Now, the back plate is something else that you're gonna to have to measure. This helps protect your binoculars and helps keep the hood, as soon as I can get a hold on it, the hood in place here. And it calls for a one inch rise on that. So we're gonna go, so, at the bottom right here, as you can see the stitching right above, here we go, that, that's better. The stitching, this is the top, that's what you're measuring from. And so we're measuring one inch from that, I'm a tad bit high, I'm like an, a quarter, maybe an eighth inch high. So I'm going to leave that for now, I, 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 like I said, I set this up previously. So um, Then you want to drop your binoculars in there. What I do like about this, it's a little bit of resistance at the bottom. Not much, but just a tiny bit. There, I've had some that just fall in there, and they're just really loose. To get this right, your tension needs to be adjusted later, but you're just going to bring that up and over. It's obviously a lot easier when you're wearing it. So it's just going to sit up over there like this. All right? Fits pretty nice. It's not super snug, but it's on there. Got some tension here. The Velcro is fully in place, and you've got a lot of Velcro to play with. So, I mean, it goes way up there. Um, I failed to mention earlier, side pocket here, side pocket here. That's it. That's how you set that up. It's crazy, crazy simple. So the next thing we are going to do, we're going to set up our accessory pouch. When you open it up, it's got a little keeper in there. All right. The next thing you need to do is determine which side you want your uh, rangefinder pouch on. I like mine on my right. I'm right-handed. So you'll notice that there's a, there's a, I don't even know if these things are called, a loop attachment, <laughs> a hinged loop attachment, I guess. And, but this is already on here and it attaches here. All you're going to do is I squeeze in right here, just like this, lift up and that piece comes off and put that over there about the same thing. You're going to pinch, get that metal loop off there. 
obviously if you're doing the left side it's just the opposite way it's the same boom that extends out that extends out so you can then bring your pouch over here pull your buckle all the way up as far as you can get it there we go and then you're going to lay this across here you see one of the key points here the velcro up on this side needs to be as far up as you can get so really snug up against there that is going to help it stay in place the best i've experimented with it coming right out here and all that it stays the best when you come up here because it does settle in and then i also make sure that little piece is over the top of the velcro i tried it underneath it didn't really work very well so i put it in there Push that Velcro down. Make sure you've got as much attachment of the Velcro as you can. Boom. And it's done. Sizing on this is pretty simple. I've got a Vortex Razor 4000. Put it in there. Push it down. Make sure it's all the way in. Mine did not fit initially, and I don't think it's going to fit right now. So pull that off. I put the back of uh, the hood over it. You see where this is sticking up, just like the big model, but that one doesn't come loose. I just barely set it over the top of that. And then put it back up just, just a little snug. It doesn't have to be real tight. Just a little snug. And then that way when you're wearing it, it just pulls over like that. That's how you get that together. That's pretty much what's going on here. All right, so this is what this looks like on the body. It's a, this is still pretty new, so it's probably going to sound a little loud when I'm moving around uh, for now. And if you notice, this is, I mean, it's super minimal, so it's kind of, you add this little extra weight over here with the uh, rangefinder, it kind of pulls and kind of makes it weird. But I don't usually adjust the final fit until I put my pack on and I've gone for a couple walks with it. I did go ahead, put the retention for both the binocular and the rangefinder up high. And so to open, you just grab it and pull it over. That's it. To close, do the same. This is waterproof. It's got like three layers or something like that. So um, I like this a lot. I don't think I'm going to be changing again. I'm not sure I'm in love with these. Um, when I hunt and I'm out and I know I'm on the hunt for animals and I'm stationary or moving, um, I actually leave these open at all times, both of them. And so I will walk around like this because the last thing I want to do is walk straight up on an elk or a deer and I haven't quite been ready and my gear's not ready and I'm like, oh crap, I gotta hurry up. That's just noise that you're gonna make. And so I leave these open as much as possible. If it starts raining, I close them. Um, it's not that these are gonna get damaged or anything. I just don't want eye drop or water droplets into the eye cups here. Here's the back piece. It lays pretty dang flat. This is so lightweight, it's it's not even there like it's close man it's it's really close and so i just wanted a really lightweight option affordability that's really on you like if you really like good gear i've seen guys put a set of two thousand dollar binoculars into a thirty dollar bino harness hey man you do you but i also see them put you know a three hundred dollar scope on a four thousand dollar rifle like but i you know that's not on me that's on you get good gear i think this is good gear it's really well made it's quiet doesn't have the magnet. It's got options. There's a bear spray holster that you can put on here. There's a, depending on weight, I know it's only gonna add two ounces, but I might add another accessory pouch on this side just for immediate storage. Um, I maybe need to see if my cell phone can fit in there or something like that. But if you're looking for a good bino harness and you like the lightweight stuff, um, still robust, I would definitely check out Stone Glacier. Um, again, with the discount type stuff, Military law enforcement, go to their website. That's all I'll say. Even at full price, um, I think it's worth it. This is a really well-made piece of equipment. Highly recommend it. That's all I got to say about that. You guys have a wonderful day. Stay tactical.